For this morning's women's doctor, only about 20% of ovarian cancers are found early. That's all according to the American Cancer Society. The main reason is because symptoms, they can be quite vague. More than 21,000 women will receive a new diagnosis of ovarian cancer this year, and almost 14,000 will die from it. It's the fifth deadliest cancer among women. Age is a risk factor. About half the women diagnosed are 63 or older. And Mercy Medical Center, Dr. Kopaltia says it's often diagnosed later in the course of the disease because of those subtle symptoms. And Dr. Kopaltia joins us this morning to talk a little bit more about it. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me. And here's the question. With those signs and symptoms being so rare, what are some that people can at least keep an eye out for when it comes to ovarian cancer? Sure. So uh, some of those signs and symptoms, uh, they're very oftenly confused or, or dismissed as uh, something else. And, th and they are pretty vague. So some of them could be symptoms of abdominal bloating um, or uh, feelings of early satiety. So feeling full after eating a small amount, uh, sometimes nausea, vomiting. Um, these things can be misrepresented and, and thought to be just signs of reflux. Sure. Um, well, well, if, if, also, uh, urinary complaints, uh, symptoms of uh, urinary uh, incontinence or uh, having to use the bath bathroom often. Um, those those can also uh, be signs of uh, ovarian cancer. Sure. And so if, if that's the case, then how do you distinguish between the two? When do you know that you're dealing with something less serious compared to something that is pretty serious? Right, right. And so um, I think one of the big things we always tell people is if these symptoms are new or persistent, um, and certainly if more than one of them are present. So if you have a couple of those symptoms, they kind of started more recently, they all started at the same time, and they don't go away. These are things that are less likely to be something that's uh, uh, a small issue and more likely to uh, unfortunately be something more serious. We talked a little bit about this earlier, but if you could elaborate a little bit more on, on women who are more at risk for ovarian cancer than others. So, I mean, one of the biggest risks uh, are, are women with a strong family history of breast cancer um, or ovarian cancer. Um, and those are, are uh, very often part of a genetic syndrome, um, which can be tested, especially if you have family members who have these uh, cancers. Yep. Um, otherwise, age is a big risk factor. Um, and we do know also that people who have been on birth control in the past um, or people who have more children, people who are breastfed, those are, are all things that can lower your risk factors. Uh, now, we know that if someone does have this diagnosis, there are treatments out there. There, there is some help, and I'm curious of what some folks need to know when it comes to uh, the best form of treatment. And so, uh, you know, ovarian cancer is usually treated um, initially surgically, and then unfortunately, as, as, as it's often diagnosed at a later stage, it's, it's very often uh, followed by chemotherapy. Um, here at Mercy, we're able to offer our patients something called HIPEC, which is a heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy. So we actually treat with chemotherapy at the time of surgery. And uh, there are not many centers in the country who do that. And it's uh, not applicable in every case, but it's, um, it is something new and, and uh, something that can be helpful to patients. All right. That's Dr. Kopatia. Thank you so much for your help this morning. We appreciate it. No problem. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Certainly. And if you have any other questions or would like a referral, all you have to do is call 1-800-MD-MERCY.